122. Rebecca invests 10000 in an account paying an annual simple interest of 6%, while James invests the same amount in an account paying 6% interest, compounding annually. Assuming no withdrawals or deposits are made, how much more money will James have in his account compared to Rebecca after 20 years? Well, let's begin by calculating how much Rebecca will have after 20 years. The amount of simple interest that she's going to earn is going to be the principal of that, which represents the amount of money she invests in, times the interest rate, times the time in years. So the principal is 10000 The interest rate that she's receiving is 6% which if we divide that by 100, that's 0 0.06 as a decimal. And the time in years is 20 years. So every year, she's gonna receive 6% of 10,000, which is 600. So she's gonna receive $600 each year for 20 years. Thus the total amount of interest payments she's gonna receive is 12,000. Now, the amount of money that's in her account is going to be the principal plus the interest received. So that's going to be her initial investment of $10,000 plus the $12,000 she received in interest. So at the end of 20 years, Rebecca is going to have a total of $22,000 in her account. Now, let's do the same for James. James is not receiving simple interest. Rather, the interest he's receiving is compounded. So we're going to see the effect of compound interest versus simple interest. Now, the amount that James is going to receive is based on this formula. It's P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the NT. So A is going to equal the final amount in his account, that is the principal plus interest combined. His principal is the same as that of Rebecca's, which is 10000 He's receiving the same interest rate of 6%. Now, it's compounded annually. That means that he gets paid interest once per year. So N is 1 and T is 20. So this becomes 10000 times 1.06 raised to the 20. Now, notice the difference of what's happening. Rebecca, every year, she's receiving $600 in interest. However, James, in his first year, he's going to receive $600 in interest. But in his second year, he's going to earn 6% on his $10,000 plus the $600 that's already in his account. Rebecca is only earning 6% each year on the 10000 on the principal only. So in the second year, the third year, and the fourth year, she's only receiving $600. But James, in his second year, he's receiving 6% not only on the principal, but on the interest that he accumulated in the first year. So thus we have the compound effect. James is not only receiving interest on his principal like Rebecca is, but he's also receiving interest on the interest that he accumulated in past years. And that's why he's going to have more in his account. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in. 10,000 times 1.06 raised to the 20th power is going to equal $32,071.35. So due to the effect of compounding, James was able to triple his money in a 20-year period. Whereas Rebecca, she was only able to double her money in a 20-year period. And so the effect of compounded is powerful when allowed to operate over a long period of time. Now, the difference between 32000 and 22000 we can see it's approximately 10000 So therefore, answer choice D is the right answer.
Number 123. Austin invests 10000 in a mutual fund, paying an annual interest rate of 9% compounded quarterly, while Rachel invests the same amount in a mutual fund paying an annual interest rate of 12% compounded quarterly. How much more money will Rachel have in her account compared to Austin after 20 years? Now, in this problem, everything is the same except the interest rate. The investment is still 10,000 and the investment period is still 20 years. And the rate at which it's being compounded is quarterly. So we're gonna see the effect of a higher interest rate on the growth of an account. So let's focus on Austin. So we're gonna use the same formula. It's P times one plus R divided by N raised to the NT. So his investment principle is 10,000. The interest rate that Austin receives is 0.09 or 9%. Now it's compounded quarterly. What does that mean? And what is the value of N? Well, we know that there's four quarters in a dollar, so N is gonna be four. The fact that it's compounded quarterly means that his account will be credited with interest four times a year, with an annual interest rate of 9%. And T is still 20. So go ahead and type this in exactly the way you see it. So after 20 years, the amount that Austin will have in his account is $59,301.45. Now, let's see how much Rachel is going to have in her account. So the principle is still the same. The only difference is the interest rate. Instead of 9%, it's now 12%, which is 0.12 as a decimal. Her account is still compounded quarterly, the same as Austin. So she's going to have a hundred and $6,408.91. So as you can see, it's a lot higher than Austin. So a simple difference in the interest rate, a 12% interest rate will earn you a lot more money over time as opposed to a 9% interest rate. So it makes a huge difference, even though the numbers may seem small, but a 3% difference in the interest rate as you can see, has a big impact over time. Now, the question is asking for how much more money will Rachel have in her account compared to Austin? So we need to subtract these two numbers. So this is going to be approximately $47,107.46. So answer choice C is the best answer. Number 124. Craig invests 10000 in an annuity paying 10% in annual interest compounded monthly, while Monique invests 10000 in an annuity paying 10% annual interest compounded semi-annually. How much more money will Craig have compared to Monique after 20 years? So this time we're seeing how often interest is credited in a year if it has a significant impact. Let's start with Craig. So he's invested in 10,000. The interest he's receiving is 10%, which is 0.10 as a decimal. And it's compounded monthly. So how many times will his account be credited with interest in a year? Well, there's 12 months in a year, so N has to be 12. And he's going to invest for a total time of 20 years.
And so after 20 years, he's going to have $73,280.74. Now let's compare that with Monique. She's going to invest the same principal. She's going to receive the same interest rate. However, her account is compounded semi-annually. So semi means two. This is going to be twice in a year. So this is going to be 70,399.89. Now let's subtract these two numbers to get our answer. So the difference is approximately $2,881. So as you can see, if the account is compounded monthly compared to semi-annually, you're going to earn more. So as N increases, the account value will increase as well. So it's better to have your account compounded monthly than semi-annually, but the difference even over 20 years is not that great. But now let's consider the effect of time. Let's say if Craig keeps his money instead of for 20 years, let's see what happens if he keeps it in this account for 30 years. If he keeps it for 30 years, it's going to go up to 198000 $373.99. As you can see, it's a lot higher than 73000 So time plays a much more important role than whether if it's compounded monthly or semi-annually. So based on these three problems, the two biggest factors that will affect the growth or the amount in the account is the interest rate and the time spent in the account or keeping your money in the account. Those two things will greatly affect the value of how much money is in the account.